Bubbles in the ground, cranes in the air, factories opening, all those jobs meaning we created. We've created more than 12,000 brand new jobs in two years. That's more than any president of American history has created in four years. That means overall we've created more jobs in two years than any administration has created in the first four years. And uh, I think all this matters. It's no accident. Our economy has created 10 million jobs, 668 manufacturing jobs. They were wrong. We recovered all the manufacturing jobs we lost during the pandemic. If you look at my presidency so far, it's a jobs presidency. Welcome back. I mean, as painful as it is to listen there to the senile liar in chief, it's important to break down what is going so wrong with Binomics. So joining us now to do exactly that is Joel Griffith. He's a research fellow with the Heritage Foundation. Joel, there's a lot to unpack there just from what we just heard. Obviously, there's a lot to unpack more generally from this total crap storm of Bidenomics that we've all been subjected to for the past two and a half years. One thing that I know that that you've been passionate about and I'm passionate about as well is the housing market. I mean, Joe Biden is not really making much reference there to the fact that mortgage rates have effectively doubled over the past three years of his presidency. Does anyone there know anything about the housing market? And do they care about vulnerable Americans who are struggling to purchase a first home or a second home? Well, uh, thanks for having me. And President Biden certainly doesn't seem to show that he understands just how painful the housing market is for typical American families right now. And if you go back just a few years ago, you could get into a standard median priced home and your mortgage payment would be under $1,000 per month. Well, since those interest rates bottomed out, really the very first month of President Biden's presidency, home prices have increased by 25% while mortgage rates have almost tripled. And so what that means for you is if you're looking to just buy a median priced home, your mortgage is no longer 975 bucks a month. You're paying over $2,000 a month to get that home. And we've never had a time in our nation's history in which home affordability has been worse. And that's not just in terms of the actual sticker price on the home. We're talking about the percentage of a person's income that it takes to afford the mortgage it takes about 45% of a typical person's income to get into just a typical home. That's wow. about twice the level that it was at just several years ago, and it's far above where it was at historically in this country. He doesn't seem to acknowledge the problem, and he certainly has not put forward solutions to that problem. And even more than that, I mean, the Federal Reserve is not exactly helping the situation out either. I mean, you know, inflation, Joel, as you know, it's come down a little bit from its summertime 2022 peaks. But when I say it's come down a little bit, it's still hovering in the three and a half to four percent range, which is essentially double what the Federal Reserve's actual two percent target is. How worried should the median consumer American continue to be, the median consumer, the median saver, the median home purchaser? How worried should we all be? about inflation now that it's been over a year since its actual summertime peak in 2022? Uh, we need to be very concerned. And that's because even though the inflation rate has come down somewhat from the 40-year highs that we saw about a year ago, inflation is running at 8% annually. It's now running closer to three and a half, four percent 4%. That is still far above the historical norm. And second of all, even if inflation, if the inflation rate were to come back to the historical norm of 2% per year, that does zero to close the gap in real wages that we've seen. We've seen real wages decline by $5,000 annually for a typical family. If inflation suddenly comes down to right about where wage growth is, you're still looking at a real wage cut of $400 per month because that gap still exists. Second of all, there's been no acknowledgement of the role that the Federal Reserve has played in the housing problem as well. It's not just inflation overall. Our central bank printed trillions of dollars, not just to fund government operations. That, of course, was inflationary. We saw the monetary base increase six-fold over the past 15 years or so. That, that's immense. And we saw it accelerate um, over the past few years. But the Federal Reserve also printed trillions of dollars to buy a mortgage-backed security. So that inflated home prices even more. And now we're stuck in this catch-22 situation where if the Fed tries to remedy the problem that it caused by increasing interest rates, and if you increase the rates, well, that deters people from taking out more loans 
which hopefully will suppress money supply growth. But if you increase those rates, obviously you also make it more difficult to expand your business or to purchase a home. There's no easy way out of this. And it's time the Federal Reserve acknowledged responsibility, which Chair Powell still refuses to do. And in addition to inflation, it's obviously also a fiscal issue. So you're getting whacked by both sides, basically. You're getting whacked from the central bank, and you're also getting whacked from Congress spending like drunken sailors. So, Joel, I'm sure you saw recently the national deficit this year is projected to literally double to $2 trillion, which, historically speaking, you would only expect to see a deficit of that magnitude relative to gross domestic product in a time of prolonged war, such as World War II, or maybe a horrific depression, such as the financial crisis of 2007, 2008. We are in neither of those things. And yet here we are with a deficit that is going to reach $2 trillion. Seems to me like inflation is probably only going to get a lot worse than that. It's the old theory of just throwing money at things. I mean, what do you expect is going to happen? Inflation is obviously going to get worse. Joel, why can't Congress get the spending under control, man? I, I mean, what is going on there? It, it's, it, it's Biden, it's Democrats, it's Republicans. Does anyone in D.C. care about controlling spending at this point? Uh, far too few do. I mean, there's, of course, a few senators um, that call attention to this issue, including Senator Rand Paul and Senator Mike Lee. But there's far too few politicians willing to address it. And that's for several reasons. Uh, for a long time, our federal government got away with spending beyond its means. And that's because our economy, thanks to our a free market, mostly free market system, our economy continued to grow in real terms. And that was able to mask some of the consequences uh, of, of inflation. We still had inflation. It was still a harm to families, but it wasn't nearly uh, as dramatic. Uh, but often politicians know that they can put, they can punt this problem down the road. Now it's really starting to catch up with us as we're feeling the impact at 8% inflation rate. But politicians have discovered or rediscovered something else. They're easily able to put the blame on inflation onto other factors. Remember early on in, in the war between Ukraine and Russia, early on our politicians were blaming inflation on, on Putin. When that became less of an economic issue, well, they put the blame, a lot of left-wing politicians put the blame on greed. Politicians know they can get uh, away with shifting the blame. And meanwhile, most people will never take a look at a chart of the Federal Reserve and see, well, gee, what is this $9 trillion in dollars that were created out of thin air? And does that have an impact on my life? Well, it has a very real impact on our life. That's why it's very important, I think, for folks like you in the media to, to drive home this point, that the pain that we're feeling right now at the pump, the pain we're feeling at the grocery store or renting a home, that is directly related to the uh, immensely reckless fiscal decisions that Congress has made over many years, and it's only magnified the past three years. Hey guys, Josh Hammer here. We've got a great special for you called Breaking Bidenomics. So the Biden re-election campaign is running on so-called Bidenomics more than virtually anything else, it seems. But they're trying to sell you a very, very different vision of Bidenomics compared to what our actual reality has been living through it for the past few years. We're going to break down what Bidenomics really is. We're going to be joined by some outstanding guests. We'll help break it down for you from the inflation to the deficit spending, the war on energy, all of that. And you can go ahead and download the first TV app to watch Breaking Bidenomics for free.